Hey folks, welcome to the Do It Yourself Dad channel. Today I'm going to be installing an infrared heater in my garage directly above my workbench. This is going to be really nice because it's going to be much more efficient than any of the other heaters I've been using in the past, and it's going to give me localized spot heat right here on the workbench. Now, this is a great thing for patios or garages or things like that, but what's really nice is it's efficient. It gives you heat right where you want it, and it's instant. So you're not having to wait for it to heat up, and you're not really wasting juice heating a whole garage if you just need to be warm over your workbench. Let me show you what we're doing. Now this is the heater itself. It's got a infrared coil inside and it directs everything in one direction. So what's really nice about that, like I said before, is it'll give me directional heat right at my workbench, making it a lot more efficient. Still have these in there, I'll remove these after it's installed. But what's nice is this thing has a mount and actually a arm mount, kind of like a TV mount almost, which so can get it off the wall. I'm gonna be putting it directly above my workbench right here. I'm actually going to be mounting it to that block. That block is anchored into a stud to give it a good anchoring point, and it's going to come out right here. What's really nice about these is because all the heat is directional, if I have it angled this way, it's not going to be getting my TV hot, and it shouldn't really affect the light either, but we're going to test that out. The other thing that's worth mentioning with these is these run on 110, so there's no special wiring needed, and this maxes out at 1500 watts, although I don't think I'm going to be needing all that. I'm actually going to run this thing through a power pack so we can see how much juice it's pulling, so we can see exactly how much energy we're going to be using. So now we're going to climb up onto our workbench here, because, you know, safety third. Now I've already got the holes drilled in the block of wood up here. Now it is nice, this comes with the screws that you need but it also comes with um, drywall anchors if you do need to go into drywall. Now this unit is made by New Air and I actually have a New Air air conditioner that I'm also running in the garage, keep me cool in the summertime. If you want to check it out, I will have a link for this thing down in the description below. So now that we've got that in place, this whole piece can pivot down. So we're gonna pivot it down like that, just like you would a TV mount. Now it does also come with these screws. These are the expansion type screws that you would use if you're putting this thing into a brick wall. If you're gonna be going into drywall and can't anchor into a stud, first, I would really recommend going into a stud, but I would use really heavy duty drywall anchors for that. And I removed this from it. This is the bracket if you just want top to bottom tilt. We put the other bracket in it, one so we can move it around, but also to get it a little bit further away from the wall and from the TV set and the light that's on the wall. And this is how the actual heater mounts into that bracket. It was hard to get the tripod up here with me up here, uh, but this is how it mounts in here. You've got the brackets here and there are Allen screws that go through and screw into this piece. So it's real simple, you just hold it up, thread these screws through and tighten it. So you can see on this bracket, there's actually multiple pivot points. You can actually aim it back and forth, up and down and actually rotate the entire thing as well. So you get this thing pointed exactly where you need it. So now we're just gonna run the power cord here down to an outlet. And now with the heater up there, we can turn it on with the remote. And you can see it's starting to glow red. Now without any fans or anything moving, I can immediately feel the heat hitting my face here right behind the camera. So now the entire heater starts glowing red. Now what's really interesting is there are no fans, nothing moving air around, but if you're standing directly in front of it like this, I can feel the heat. Coming off to the side here, even over about like this, I can still feel the heat, but when you start walking past it around this direction, you can't. So this is great for localized spot heating, which is why I've got it right over my workbench right here where I do most of my work. So one thing I was hoping for with this one was a little bit of adjustment. This one, it's basically on or off, and there's a timer that'll give you two hours of time. So you can't adjust it hotter or colder. It's basically on or it's off. But now I wanna find out how much juice this thing is actually pulling. And this is strangely the easiest way for me to figure that out. This is a power station from Vigorpool. It should be able to put out enough to power this thing and it'll give me the output right here in watts. So I should be able to tell how much power that thing is pulling. So let's fire it up. And then if we come down here, it'll give me the actual wattage. So right now it's pulling, still climbing a little bit. Looks like right around 1400, eh, it's going up still. A little over 1400 watts. We'll check in in a second once it kind of equals itself out and see where it's at. Okay, so the wattage has stabilized and it's pulling, it's kind of hovering around uh, 1425 to 1430, right in that range for wattage. So it gives you an idea of how much juice this thing is gonna be pulling. So now I want to give you a little idea of what I'm talking about when I say spot heating. The heater is running over there and I'm at the other end of my garage. And from back here, I can feel it, but just slightly. It's barely noticeable. So as I get closer, and I'm walking towards the workbench now, and uh, 
Every so often down in the comments, I get a comment about how oh, your workbench is dirty, your garage is dirty. I'm going to let you know a little secret as to why it is that way. Come here. It's because I use it. Anyway, <clears throat> about halfway between my garage door and my workbench, I can definitely feel the heat now, um, but it's not as hot. When I get to about, I'd say right now I'm within about 15 feet of it. This is where I'm really starting to pick up the heat. I can really feel it. Once I'm directly under it, I am toasty. So this is something great if you want to do spot heating. Um, this one's also rated to be outdoors. So you could use this on a patio. Um, they say don't use it in the rain when it's actually coming down, but it can get wet. So you could use this outside on a patio for a sitting area or something like that. You just don't want to be doing a huge area or you'd have to have more than one of these things. So I'm getting ready to edit the video and I realized I'm a great big nerd and I forgot I have a thermal camera. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna fire up the thermal camera and turn off all the lights in the garage. That way the only thing this thing will be seeing is heat coming off of that. So we'll be able to see the heat coming off of that, but we'll also be able to see the heat bouncing off of all the things in the garage that it's hitting, which will give me and you an idea of where this thing is broadcasting heat specifically. This should actually be really cool. So let's turn off the lights and turn this thing on. Okay, so we've got the thermal camera turned on. We're gonna turn off the lights in the garage and let's take a look around. So, first thing we can see here is the workbench. And you can actually see the shadows of the heat coming down the workbench, coming up to the light. It actually changes the, uh, the little color tones in this thing as you get up to this thing, because that is very hot up there. But you can see there is some heat coming off of it, but it's not significantly heating up the light above it or the TV behind it, and that is good. But now what I'm really interested in is coming across here coming across the garage. Anything really bright that it's reflecting back off of, all the way back to this table full of all the junk that I'm working on, is heat and infrared bouncing back off it. So you can see all the infrared. And as you move further back into the garage, you can see it's not as warm. And all the way to that back wall where you can see those really cold lines back there, that's the metal in the garage door. And even my, uh, my Supra here, when you come across here, that right there, in the, that's the reflection of the heat lamp. You can come across, you can actually see the gradient in the hood. It's cooler on one side than it is on the other where the heat lamp's working. So this is actually really cool. That's the, that's the hot seat right there. I was just sitting on that stool and I was filming that little intro and um, that is where I was sitting and that is directly below the heat lamp up there. So you can see right there, it's aiming right about where I would be normally sitting if I was working at my workbench, keeping me, my hands, and all my stuff warm. Another thing worth noting is this is actually the second one of these that I bought. I bought one from another company a little while ago, and I wound up returning it because it was a piece of junk. It had a lot of problems with it, um, but the biggest issue I had with it was the remote itself was trash, and it only worked using the remote. So if you lost the remote, your heater didn't work. If you broke the remote, good luck finding a new one. With this one, however, the remote works, but you can also just come right up to it. And turn it off. That way, if you ever lose your remote, break your remote, or just too lazy to find your remote, you can still turn your heat on and off, no problem. Now I'm in my garage right now and it's 42 degrees ish out and raining. I had my garage door open until just a few minutes ago and I've got that thing cooking away up there and I am warm. I'm out here in a t-shirt. I definitely don't even need a sweatshirt on right now. I actually wish I could turn it down a little bit. Um, now, I still have the thing running off the power brick here. This thing is a monster. It's the biggest one I've got. And I'm gonna have a video for that coming out soon. So if you're interested in off-grid power, camping and stuff like that, hit the subscribe button. It'll be coming out soon. Um, and I'm also gonna have links down below for that guy. So if you wanna check it out, the only gripe I have about it is it doesn't seem to be adjustable as far as the power goes. So it's all or nothing. And right now it's warm enough. I wish I could turn it down a little bit. Now, if this video helped you out, please give it a great big thumbs up. Go down below, hit that subscribe button. Leave me a comment. Let me know what kind of stuff you're working on in your garage that you might need to hear for or any other things you'd like to see me do around the house. And of course, 